So Rockset is a search and analytics database that provides low latency response time over real time data. This is the first video in the Rockset database internal series. And in this one, we will take a look into its architecture and understand some pretty cool design decisions they took. But before we do that, here are a few places where Rockset fits in really well. In case of e-commerce, you can use Rockset to power your fraud, spam and anomaly detection. In case of gaming, you can build real time leaderboards with it. You can use Rockset to build analytics dashboard for SaaS applications. And if you are content heavy, then you can use Rockset's vector search to power instant personalization. While I was going through the internals, the coolest thing that I found out about Rockset is how it allows you to fire queries on top of semi-structured data without having a need to predefine the schema. Such a huge convenience item. We'll touch upon the implementation nuances of it in a couple of videos later, but it will surely blow your mind. So stay tuned for this series. Now, before we go into the architecture of Rockset, let's take a step back to understand where it fits into your scheme of thing. So given that Rockset is a managed offering, it has a lot of native integrations to pull data from your transactional systems like MongoDB, MySQL, DynamoDB, Postgres. It can pull data from streams and even from your data lakes and data warehouses. Once the data is pulled in Rockset, it is now available to be queried with very low latency and that would power your use case like leaderboards, recommendations, personalizations and whatnot. Right. Now, let's go deeper into Rockset's architecture now. Now, Rockset is based on top of ALT architecture, which is aggregator, leaf and tailor. The whole idea behind this is that you have very clearly defined three layers of nodes, three layers of servers, who has very well defined scope of responsibility. So let's talk about tailors. The job of the tailor is to pull data from streams, from transactional systems, from S3 or from your data lakes and data warehouses and put them into leaf node. Right? They also have a write API that allows you to ingest data in Rockset. Right? Now, instead of directly tailor writing to the leaf node, the whole idea is the tailor would accept the write and immediately write it to a distributed log. This is just to ensure that you never lose the write. Right? That has happened on Rockset. Right? Now, from the distributed log, the leaf node pull the data and this is where your data is stored. The data is also stored on S3. We'll talk about it, how that happens, right? Just hold on for, for just hold on for a minute. So data is pulled by your leaf node and stored over here. So this is where your storage happens. Okay. Then comes your aggregator nodes. The aggregator nodes is the ones which whose job is to accept the SQL query. They execute the SQL query by pulling the required data from the leaf node. Right. So aggregators node are called aggregators because they're pulling the data, aggregating it and responding back to the user. Right. Okay. Now the good part about having this very well defined boundaries of responsibility is that it can handle burst with ease. So for example, given that you have an architecture like this, imagine if you have a very large burst of amount of data to be ingested in a short amount of time. So all you need to do is just scale up your tailors. Right? Because if you have large amount of data to be ingested, just add more nodes to it, which would take the data, put into distributed log and now it can be slowly consumed by your leaf node. Right? That's one. If you have large amount of data, like the storage is large, then you can just scale up your leaf nodes if you require. Right? And if you have large amount of user queries that are coming in, then all you need to do is just scale up your aggregator nodes. The good part, given that SQL is the language of analytics, Rockset offers you a standard SQL interface to query the data from Rockset, making it very easy for you to consume and integrate with it. Right? Now this separation of concern makes everything really easy to scale, really simple to scale. And that's the beauty of Rockset. Right? Now let's go slightly nuanced into the role of leaf node. Now leaf node is where your actual storage is happening. Now Rockset uses RocksDB to store the data. But instead of using the standard open source RocksDB, they have tuned the RocksDB and created a repository or created a database called RocksDB Cloud, which is RocksDB, which is optimized for cloud. Now what it does is the data that you ingest in RocksDB is then pushed to S3 for durability reasons. This is where I was speaking about how it pushes the data to S3. So it, so RocksDB or sorry, Rockset leverages S3's durability in order to uh, like S3's capability to offer very high durability on top of your data. Right? Now, RocksDB in general, let me just give you a brief about RocksDB so that everybody is on the same page. Now RocksDB 
is an LSM tree based database. Right? Now, why RocksDB? Given that it is LSM tree based database, the writes that are done to RocksDB are not immediately flushed to the disk. They are all, the writes are accepted in memory by RocksDB. They are buffered and then periodically flushed to the disk. This way you get very high write throughput for RocksDB. And the files are periodically pushed in SST file, which is the sorted string file, uh, sorted string table file. And then these are then pushed to S3 for durability reasons. Right? That is why now Rockset, this is how Rockset gets very high write throughput and durability. Okay. Now, one very good thing about this is that given that there are large number of leaf node on which your data could be stored, Rockset uses hash based ownership in order to figure out which leaf node would this particular document go to. So every document has an ID. When the document is indexed, we need to figure out which node or which leaf node will this document go into. So it uses a hash based ownership to determine this. Now because it is hash based and hash given a very nice spread of IDs, it would be like the ownership of ingesting does not go to a few set of nodes. It goes to, it is almost equally distributed across all the leaf nodes that are there. That just makes your life easy and it minimizes the chances of hotspot problem that you might have. Okay. Now we spoke about leaf node. Now let's spoke about aggregators. How query is executed? The query is given to aggregator in the standard SQL format. Once the query comes to aggregator, the job of aggregator is that given a query, it would break it down into disjoint subqueries, spread it across the leaf node, the relevant leaf node, get the data, have some execution there, get the data, aggregate the data, respond back to the user. Right? So here the whole idea is the aggregator node that accepts a query does a scatter and gather. So the scatter of query across the relevant leaf nodes and then gather for the responses, results are then merged and responded back to the user. And this just makes your life very easy because now aggregator has a very clear set of responsibility. Split the query or rather spread the query across the leaf node, get the data, merge it, respond back to the user. And so in case there is a rise in your query volume and your leaf nodes start to become a bottleneck. In that case, what Rockset does is Rockset can easily add more leaf nodes to it and can allow those leaf nodes to download the SST files from S3, making now SST files redundant across your leaf layer. And now your aggregators can reach out to the newly created leaf node to fire the query like it always used to do. This is how you can also scale your queries that are coming in to your system with ease. Right? So there is no bottleneck. Your entire system is now horizontally scalable with this very three distinct layer, aggregator, leaf and tailor. And this is a very high level overview of Rockset's architecture. Right? In subsequent videos, we'll go deeper into each one of these nuances and trust me, it's really interesting the way they have solved low latency problem. Right? And yeah, this is all what I wanted to cover as part of my first video of the Rockset database internal series. I hope you found it interesting. Hope you found it amusing. That's it for this one. I'll see you in the next one. Thanks a ton.